Greetings. Welcome to First Unitarian Church of Wilmington, Delaware. My name is Reverend Pamela Watt, and I am delighted that you have chosen to be part of our online whole church worship service, where we welcome people of all ages, backgrounds, and identities to join us. We are grateful that you are part of our online community. And now I invite you to prepare your heart and your mind for this time of worship. Hello, you, you family. I'm going to sing a song with you called Shine On Me. It's an amazing spiritual that anybody can sing. Mm -hmm. And in these days when the things that we're dealing with, the feeling separate and all of that, and things seem so hard, mm -hmm. this is one of those songs that you just throw your head back, put it in your medicine kit. All you have to do is ask. And here's how it goes. Shine on me, oh, shine on me. Let the light from the lighthouse shine on me, oh, shine on me. Yes, shine on me. Let the light from the lighthouse shine on me. Lift me up, oh, lift me up. Let the light from the lighthouse lift me up. Oh, lift me up, yes, lift me up. Let the light from the lighthouse lift me up. Oh, hold, hold me close, yes, hold me let the light from the lighthouse hold me close. Yes, hold me close. So hold me close. Let the light from the lighthouse please hold me close. Oh, shine, shine on me, shine on me. Yes, shine on me. Let the light, Let the light from the lighthouse shine on me. Oh, shine on me. Yes, shine on me. Let the light from the lighthouse shine on me. All you have to do is just ask. The light is always there. Always. Always. Always.
come into the circle of love and justice. Come into the community of mercy, holiness, and health. Come, and you shall know peace and joy. Here at First Unitarian Church of Wilmington, we have a tradition. We light a chalice whenever we gather, whether it's for a worship service or a board meeting or committee meeting, whether we're lighting a chalice for a wedding or a memorial service where we're saying goodbye to a beloved who has died at home, sometimes by ourselves in a time of reflection or meditation, sometimes with family or friends to celebrate our connections with one another. And today we light a chalice, a chalice that reminds us that we are entering into a different kind of time than the ordinary time we have throughout our morning and day and night. This is a special time. And the chalice light reminds us to still our bodies and our minds and our spirits so that we can pay attention to all the things we normally miss and all the people we don't always see. The chalice reminds us that we are a community who believes that life is a precious gift. And each person and animal and living creature is part of us and we are part of them. If you have a chalice at home, I invite you to join us by lighting it as Catherine lights our sanctuary chalice. Today we light our chalice with an intention to slow down, to find our stillness, and to allow our own spark to shine and to look for the spark that emanates from all beings. Have you ever watched a flame? The fire is alive. Watch it. It moves. It flickers. It dances in the wind. It changes with every breath of air. Fire is alive. It is born. It grows. And it dies. <sighs> But the fire is special. It can live again and again. Watch. People have always known that fire was special. Long, long ago, before people made lighters, matches, candles, or even tables, 
People knew that fire was special. There was the great fire in the sky, the sun, which made the earth warm and made night into day. And there were the smaller fires that people made, fires that cooked their food and kept them warm and brought them light. People honored the fires because fire was special. Fire was more than human. Fire has power. It can create and it can destroy. It can bring light and it can burn. Fire can be wonderful and fire can be pretty terrible. We have to be careful with fire. And so, people thought that fire was something sacred and holy. Some people even worshipped fire and said that fire was a deity, like a goddess or a god. Other people said fire wasn't actually the deity, but just meant that the deity was there. No matter what they believed, people all over the world gave fire a special place in their religions. They had fire in their homes, of course, to cook food and keep warm. They also had sacred fires in their temples. They set sacred lamps on their altars. They lit sacred bonfires outside on the hilltops and in the groves. They placed sacred torches near the graves of those who died. We still do this today. In Washington, D.C., near the tomb of the unknown soldier, burns an eternal flame that never goes out. In churches at Christmas time, many Christians light four candles on an Advent wreath. During the eight days of Hanukkah, Jewish people light the eight candles of the menorah. And at Diwali, Hindus set, set out small lamps all around the house. And when Unitarian Universalists gather, we light a chalice. This is our sacred fire. The flame gives light and warmth, just like all fires. It's also a symbol, something we use to represent the light of learning. A chalice is really just a big cup that you can drink from. When you're thirsty, the nicest thing someone can do is to give you something to drink. Giving a drink to someone is a way to welcome them to your house. In a way, it means you're part of the same family, just like everyone here is part of the same family the Unitarian Universalist family. The picture of a flame in a chalice was first drawn by a man named Hans Deutsch during World War II for the Unitarian Service Committee. This was before your parents and maybe even your grandparents were born. During the war, the committee needed a symbol to show refugees from many different countries that they were there to help them. When refugees saw the picture of the flame in the chalice, it didn't matter what language they spoke. They understood that the symbol stood for help. Unitarian Universalists started to use the flaming chalice in their worship services after that. Just like the sacred fires, people have used chalices in their religions for thousands and thousands of years. Long ago, the Greeks and Romans put wine in their chalices. Other people have put water or blood or milk or even melted butter in their chalices. The Celts believed that drinking from the cauldron of the goddess Seardwin would bring people back to life. Jesus shared a cup of wine with his friends. Many Christians still do this in religious celebrations today. We, Unitarian Universalists, 
don't drink from our chalice. Instead, we use it to hold the flame. The circle of the chalice helps to keep the fire small. The flame doesn't blind us. It doesn't burn us. It gives us light so we can see all the different things in the universe. Even the invisible ones, because the Unitarian Universalist flame of light is a light of learning. Okay. The circle of our family keeps us warm, both our family at home and our Unitarian Universalist family. We help each other, and we share food and drink with each other. And we take care of each other because that's what families are supposed to do. And we invite everyone to come to be a part of our family because the Unitarian Universalist Chalice is a chalice of love. The flaming chalice is a symbol of learning and of love. It's our symbol, the symbol of Unitarian Universalism. From the beginning of time, families have brought their children to be dedicated to communities of love and hope. Today, we acknowledge that this community shares in a responsibility to a new child in our midst. Alex and Amy, as parents of this child, what name have you given your child? Josephine Ann. As parents, you are your children's first teachers, and you covenant today to raise them in faith and in love. In presenting your child at this service, you also invite all of us to share in some of the joy and responsibility that is yours as parents. Now, your task may not always be an easy one. The time may come when you'll need to set aside your own dreams and ambitions and pleasures so that your child may tread more surely on the onward path of life. But you accept this service to another life, knowing that your own lives will be made fuller and richer in consequence. And so, Amy and Alex, in your covenant with your child that you present today, will you instill in Josephine your shared commitment to service, respect for others, an appreciation of truth and beauty, a desire for peace, and generosity in forgiveness? And will you covenant with those in this congregation to seek our support and share in your joy, remembering that as parents, you are never alone? If so, please say, we will. We will. We will. To the congregation of this church with which these parents have come to feel a kinship and in which they find a home. Will you, the congregation, enter into covenant with this family to share in the collective responsibility for Josephine, nurturing her and supporting her religious education in our Unitarian Universalist faith? If so, will the congregation please say, we will. We will. We will. We will. We will. <laughs> This child has an older sibling, Leah. 
Leah and the children of our congregation, you have us particularly, a particular responsibility. And so I have a question for you. As Josephine grows up, she will look up to you older children. Will you be a friend to Josephine? Will you speak to her with kindness and treat her with fairness? Will you show her the best that is in you and help her to discover the best that is in her? If so, the children and Leah, please say, we will. We will. We use a flower and water, time-honored symbols in this ceremony. The rose, still in bud, holds within it the promise of the flower. Josephine, with this flower, I touch your feet so that you may stand against injustice. I touch your hands so that you might reach out for and grasp great wisdom. I touch your ears that you might hear music and the sacred silence. I touch your eyes that you might see beauty in every living thing. <laughs> and I touch your lips that you might speak the truth. And finally, I touch your heart that you may know love and give love abundantly, openly, and courageously. Okay. Oh, you did. That's perfect. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to bless your sister with some water. Josephine, with this water, I bless you, Josephine. Beloved child, you are a miracle of this world. We will learn more from you than we could ever teach. May you follow in the paths of your family, respecting all religions and drawing from the inspiration of our Unitarian Universalist tradition. May you always remember your connection with all of nature and with all that has ever been. May your life be filled with love, and may it be rich with laughter. May you always know your own holiness that, like water, can never be destroyed. Josephine, you are blessed, and you are loved. <laughs> I present to you Josephine Ann. Yay! <laughs> Welcome, Josephine. That's it, we did it. Yay! Good job! Good job! Yay. Yeah, and that's for you. Thank you for doing such a good job and being such a good sister. <laughs>
This light inspired people onward and upward and made them see the beauty in others and in themselves. But this light was also the light of a people who were treated unfairly. There was a king in power who would not let the Jewish people celebrate who and what they were and what was most important to them. The king and his people forced the Jewish people out of their homes, out of their temple, told them they were nothing, and the king and his army destroyed everything. When the Jewish people finally were able to overcome the king and his army, they returned home eager to reestablish their temple, only to find that the king had ruined the temple. They were heartbroken but they worked really, really hard to make repairs and clean the temple from top to bottom. In their tradition, the only thing left to do was to bless it with oil. Then it would be their sacred temple again. Then they could come into their strength and power and beauty and fullness. But do you know what happened? Their special oil had been mostly destroyed. There was hardly enough to keep the temple menorah burning for one day, but they needed it to burn eight days, which is how long it would take to make more oil. And even though they didn't have enough oil to last the full eight days, they did the most surprising thing imaginable. They lit the light anyway. And even though there was no good reason why it should keep burning, the flame did keep burning. It burned on past that first day into the second, through the third, through the fourth, the fifth, and all the way through the eighth and final day. And so the miracle isn't simply that the oil lasted and their temple was reclaimed. The miracle is also that they lit that candle anyway. Even after so much heartache and violence and disappointment, they lit one candle. And ever since, Jewish people celebrate Hanukkah for eight days, lighting the menorah, exchanging gifts, and remembering the story of their faith. As Unitarian Universalists, we practice a religion that is not so much about making people believe a certain thing. Instead, our beliefs are what we give our hearts to. You wanna know what you believe? Well then take a good look at what it is you give your heart to. Who or what has your attention, your time, who do you give your energy to? What do you give your energy to? Do you give your heart to your family and friends? Do you give your time and energy to your family and friends? To animals, to wildlife, to plants, to the stars and the moon and the sky? Do you give your heart to singing or dancing or drawing? Do you give your heart to help people be fair? Do you give your heart to gratitude for all that is this world? Do you give your heart to gratitude for all that is your life? Today, we promise to give our hearts and our energy to baby Josephine. We made promises to care for her and be a friend to her. We believe in Josephine and we believe in one another.
oh, hi, I didn't see you there. You know, all of this um, beautiful music about giving and receiving has made me realize that I'm a little behind on my pledge to First Unitarian Church. And so I thought I would go on my phone and use the Give Plus app and, um, and catch up on my pledge payments. In fact, while you're here, I'd love to share with you the three different ways that you can give to First Unitarian Church. One way is the Give Plus app. You just select the amount and and, uh, and how you'd like to pay and which fund you pay to, it's really easy. The one thing that's hard about it is they don't have any commas. So if you're selecting a specific amount, a large amount, say a million dollars, you just wanna make sure you count your zeros because there aren't those convenient commas to help you know how many zeros you've got in there. So that's one way to give. Another way is you could go online. You go to our website, firstuuwilm.org, there's a connect tab and under that financial support, donate now. Super easy, lots of information on giving. And then finally, there's the old fashioned checkbook. All you need to write a check is a checkbook, a pen, an envelope, I know this envelope is probably a little excessive for a check, but you might have something better at home. You'll need a stamp to mail it, unless you're dropping it off. And I also like to have some stationery on hand, you know, to write a little note to the staff, Chrissy and Marina, that we're processing our gifts and working so hard for the church, especially during the pandemic. And so that's it. Three easy ways to give, keep up, and stay current on your pledge to make sure that First Unitarian Church continues to be a community that is offering spiritual nourishment for our members and also important work in the larger community. And so take a moment today. If you have a pledge payment, make sure you're current. And if you haven't pledged but would like to send a gift, please do. We'd love your support, again, especially during such a difficult time. Thank you for all the ways that you support not just this congregation, but support health and well being in our world. It is so needed right now, and I'm glad you're here. And now, please join me in dedicating our offering to the work of this congregation, which is weaving a tapestry of love and action. We dedicate our lives and these our offerings. Light one candle for the Maccabee children with thanks that their light didn't die. Light one candle for the pain they endured When their right to exist was denied Light one candle for the terrible sacrifice Freedom and justice demand But light one candle for the wisdom to know when the peacemaker's time is at hand Don't let the light go out It's lasted for so many years Don't let the light go out, let it shine through our hopes and our tears.
that we need to never become our own foe. Light one candle for those who are suffering pain we learned long ago. Light one candle for all we believe in that anger not tear us apart. And light one candle to find us together with peace as the song in our hearts. Don't let the light go out It's lasted for so many years Don't let the light go out Let it shine through our hopes and our tears The miracle is not that the oil lasts, but that our hope lasts despite disappointment. Baruch atah tikva, blessed are you, hope. The miracle is not that the fire illumines, but that we grow brighter. Baruch atah zohar, blessed are you, brightness. The miracle is not that people tell ancient stories, but that people dare to live their own stories. Baruch Atah Midrashim, blessed are you, stories. The miracle is not that tyranny resisted, but that resistance recreates us into new beings. Baruch Atah Kadash, Blessed are you, new being. The miracle is not that courage exists, but that courage does not every time have to ball itself into a fist. Baruch atah kayil, blessed are you, courage. Fire is alive. It is born, it grows. It dies. But fire is special. It can live again and again as a candle, but also as a spark of the divine in each of us. May your spark shine brightly today and always.
Thank you.